Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you really wanted me to react to the Prophet series on the channel Islamic Inspiration. It is a series with over 41 videos. Today, we're going to start naturally with part one prophets and messengers of Allah. I believe that this series will be very beneficial to Muslims and Christians alike because obviously in Christianity it is very Jesus-centered, Jesus-focused and oftentimes I see Christians forget about the other prophets. Moreover, when Muslims say Jesus was a prophet, Christians get offended by it. They get annoyed by it because I believe that we forgot what it means to be a prophet. To be a prophet is an exalted position, probably the highest position that you can have on this planet as a human. But this is not enough for many Christians and therefore they get offended when you call Jesus a prophet. Meanwhile, saying that somebody is a prophet is of course the highest honor. Therefore, I believe that we should learn more about the prophets prior to Jesus. With no further ado, let's have a look. Indeed, there is no nation that has passed except that there has been a messenger who was sent to that nation. That is the Islamic It is he, Allah, the glorious and the powerful, who sent into this world at different times and places, messengers, peace and blessing be upon them all, who were gifted with divine scriptures, the highest of morals, by which to guide and educate the human beings to a life which is legislated for them and fulfills their very purpose. There are those who Allah Azza wa Jal had chosen. What is the total number of Anbiya? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 120,000 and messengers among them are 315. At one okay. moment there could be tens of prophets. One in the east, one in the west, one in the south, one in the north. And maybe they did not see each other but Allah sent so many prophets and messengers. 25 of them are mentioned in the Noble Quran. So all those prophets came forward from Almighty God calling the people towards God, calling the people towards good actions, coming to the people in their time, in their language, ordering the people in the same way. Oh, my people, obey Almighty God and worship only Almighty God and do good actions. Ultimately, this is the strongest point of Islam, a congruent message, a message that is permeating throughout the times, a red threat, so to speak, a message that never changed. If you really think about it, it makes sense. Looking at Genesis, the creation of Adam, how it all started. If you look at Adam as the first human, and no matter if you're a Jew, a Christian, a Muslim, you will believe in Adam. So when Adam was created, what was his religion? There must have been a religion if we believe in religion to begin with, right? If we believe that there is such a thing as religion, what is religion? Is it a relationship between us and God? Is it a man-made concept? Is it something fabricated? What is religion? So if we believe, yet again, in Adam, and Adam was the only man around, and we do believe in religion, then we have to ask ourselves, what can that religion be? So it obviously cannot be Christianity because Jesus wasn't around. It cannot be Buddhism because Buddha wasn't around. It cannot be Judaism because Judah wasn't around. So what could it be? It could only be something that is essentially even transcending of the term religion, the way that we understand it today. Because if we think about religion nowadays, we think about a man-made institution. We think about the church. We think about the synagogue. We think about the Buddhist temple. But honestly, if you really think about it, Adam didn't even have a temple. He was in a garden. So what is the religion? We really have to think about this logically. And the only way to describe religion then would be relationship. It would be a relationship between him and God. And what would that relationship be? be. The only logical conclusion would be, of course, that Adam submitted himself to that God. Worship only Almighty God and do good actions. That's what Abraham said. That's what Noah said. That's what Moses said. That's what David said. That's what Solomon said. That's what John the Baptist said. That's what Jesus Christ said. That's what Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said. 
بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد. So the prophethood began with the first man and the first prophet Adam. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was Allah's final messenger and the okay. seal of the prophets. Ah. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says. Okay. I'm sure this seems very strange to you guys watching, but for me personally, it just clicked in my mind. Out of a sudden, when he mentioned Adam as the first and Muhammad as the last, it clicked. It made sense. This message of monotheism reoccurring, reoccurring over thousands of years until it has become finalized. Best of stories. These are the best of stories because they are dealing with the best of creation. Relate unto them the stories. It's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he must narrate these stories unto the ummah. These stories are not to entertain us. These stories are for us to derive lessons and reflect and to contemplate and to think about, to deeply reflect on them. That is what we need to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he must follow the way of Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this instruction was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then what should we do they are those whom Allah has guided so follow their guidance there is a difference between a rasul and a nabi so what is the difference one is a messenger and one is a prophet the one who has a higher status is a rasul a messenger a rasul is a person who came with a new sharia with some law but the nabi who is not a rasul is following the law of another rasul so every rasul is a nabi but not every nabi is a rasul every prophet is not a messenger but every messenger is a prophet if a prophet is given a new law then he becomes a so every messenger is a prophet but not every prophet is a messenger that doesn't make sense to me because every prophet would come with a message no rasul and a nabi if he is not given a new law then he is a nabi only a prophet an example of that to make it little bit clear now musa alayhi salatu was okay. a rasul so nabi is over rasul he was a messenger given a new legislation torah while harun alayhi salatu was was a nabi because he wasn't given a new legislation instead he was following up on the legislation of musa alayhi salatu was salam this seems kind of mixed up to me please clarify it in the comment section guys so what is higher a nabi or a rasul the way that i understood it the rasul is the prophet and the messenger and the nabi would be just a messenger because if we look into muhammad he came as a prophet with a message and with the sharia so with a law if we look at jesus for example he was obeying the mosaic law and therefore he didn't come with a new law set he was only coming with the message so please explain which term means what exactly? Nabi, the plural of it is Ambiya. Rasul, the plural of it is Rusul. There okay. is a third type of person who is neither a Nabi nor a Rasul, but he is a Rasul of a Rasul, which means he is a messenger of a messenger. And who is that? Every single one of us. Subhanallah. We are all messengers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have the message it becomes mandatory on us to convey the message of the Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their stories. There are certain qualities that all the prophets had. We need to know these qualities. Number one is Wahi, divine revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was something specially for the Prophet alayhi salatu Messengers were always truthful. They never uttered a lie, even prior to prophethood. They were trustworthy and they were known as trustworthy, all of them. Another quality of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, physically, they did not have any defect. When you looked at them, you felt like getting closer. Allahu Akbar. All the messengers were described as very handsome. Then there is another quality of the messengers. They were very intelligent. They wanted to give the message. They wanted to always spread the goodness. They were not selfish with it. None of them wanted money in return for their message. None of them wanted to gain some form of popularity. 
through their message. Absolutely. If you look into the prophets, you will see that they're always followed by the lower people, by fishermen, for example, in the instant of Jesus, or by slaves even in the instance of Muhammad. Allah Azza wa does not send a female prophet. Allah does not send a prophet that's a slave. The eyes of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam sleep, but their hearts do not sleep. The next special characteristic is that they are given a choice at the time of death. They are buried where they pass away. The bodies of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam okay. do not decay. If it was possible for us to open a grave of a Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, we would find their bodies intact because the earth does not consume bodies of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. If you do not know someone, you cannot love him. We all claim that we love the Anbiya of Allah. But if we don't know the details of their life, we don't know what they went through, how could we have respect for them? Whenever we say the name of a messenger, it is our duty to say, may peace be upon them. They have done a splendid job. In fact, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that there is a curse upon the one who says Muhammad without saying sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We don't differentiate between any one of his messengers. Likewise, to reject any one of the messengers, even if you believe in them all, except for one, that means that you've disbelieved in them all. All the messengers were trained in a specific way. Do you know what the Prophet ﷺ says? There was no Nabi except that he was a shepherd at one stage. Allah trained them Interesting. with sheep, with animals before they came to human beings. What is more difficult? To look after animals or to look after human beings? It is definitely more difficult to look after animals. We must have some role models. We must have some people whom we look up to. If you are not going to provide our children and our youth with the role models of the Anbiya and the role models of Rasulullah and the role models of the Sahaba, they will go and find role models somewhere else because oh, human beings human cannot nature. live without role models. Mm. So we need to study the lives of the Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they can become our role models. Indeed, in the stories... That's a really good point, especially youths try to emulate. They need a role model. This is why it's so important to have a strong father figure. If they don't have that, they're going to seek on the outside and they're going to look at rap music, for example, certain famous people on social media and whatnot. They're going to get the wrong role models and they're going to try to emulate it. It is the formative years and they're going to try with all their might to become like those false role models. Of the previous nations and in the stories of the prophets are lessons for those with sound intellect. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahu bihamdih subhanaka allahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayh. Alright guys, and this is it for the first episode of the Prophet series. Extremely interesting here, I learned something new, the differentiation between Rasul and Nabi. I personally always thought a Prophet is a Prophet and that's that. But of course it makes sense to differentiate between a Prophet that comes with a message and a Prophet that comes with a whole new law set. And that would of course set them apart. Moses came with a message and he came with a law set. Jesus came with a message, but not with a law set. Muhammad, on the other hand, came with a message and yet again with a law set. Extremely interesting stuff. I never thought about it in this way. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you want me to continue with this Prophet series, please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.